hey now hey now hey now welcome back to another mystery addict video and i am your gracious host kel mcqueen now today we're going to be talking about the mysterious disappearance of Kristen smart she was a young girl that went missing about 25 years ago and the reason why i'm wanting to do this video is because they actually just reopened the case i felt like it was such a relatable situation and this woman went missing under very suspicious circumstances so i felt like it was really really important for me to do this video also before we get into the video make sure you like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel turn on your post notifications so that you know the next time i upload all right let's get into the story <laughs> So Kristen Smart was born February 20th, 1977 in Augsburg, Germany, please forgive me if I'm saying that wrong, to Stan and Denise Smart, who throughout most of their careers were educators. But around the time that Kristen was still little, the family relocated to Stockton, California. So Kristen Smart was such a beautiful person with a beautiful spirit. She was so much fun to be around. She was adventurous. She had friends. She was a parent's dream. After graduating high school, Smart started attending California Polytechnic State University in St. Louis, Obispo, California, starting her new life walking into adulthood. May 25th, 1996, along with doing her studies, just like every other college student, she wanted to have fun, be adventurous, and go to parties. So she suggested that her and her friends went to a fraternity party on Fraternity Row. Now they ended up going to the party, but a lot of her friends ended up leaving due to tests and things that they had to do the next day. They ended up leaving Kristen at the party, being that she seemed pretty familiar with the atmosphere, pretty familiar with the people around. So it wasn't initially alarming to anybody to allow Kristen to just go ahead and stay there and she would catch up with them later. So Kristen stayed and she partied along with the other fellow students, again, that she was familiar with. And just like in normal college party fashion, even though she was underage, she was drinking. She drunk to a point to where she couldn't really function correctly. So she actually attempted to start walking back to her dorm when she was so drunk that she decided to sit down in the yard in front and just kind of gather herself for a minute as much as she could. When doing so, two of her fellow students found her and decided to help her to go back to the dorm. One of them was male, one of them was female. When guiding Kristen back to her dorm, that's when another individual came up that was also a fellow student as well, Paul Flores. So the three of them started on their journey to guiding Kristen back to her dorm. Now, one of the students actually lived off campus. So once they got to a certain point, he left and he decided to go ahead and go home being that he didn't live on campus, so he didn't want to stay. So the two students continued on and guided Kristen as far as they could once again. Eventually they reached the female student's dormitory where she decided to go ahead and stop and go into her dorm for the night, being that it was already late, and trusted that Paul Flores would guide Smart back to her dorm. But unfortunately, she never reached that dorm. And that was the last time that Kristen Smart was seen alive. Now, Kristen Smart actually contacted her mother prior to the party that night. She said that she had something very important and exciting to tell them, so they were so excited to find out what it was, and they were waiting on a call from their daughter that never came. Now, they weren't immediately alarmed, being that they knew that, you know, she would be out and, you know, still living life and things like that, and it was the weekend, so Kristen's parents decided not to just rushed to try to get back with her and they wanted to give her her space and allow her to give them a call back in which she normally did. It was never ever a problem with contact before. Then Kristen Smart's parents get the phone call they hoped they would never ever get. You see, Kristen's roommate went on a weekend vacation. So she wasn't around at the time that Kristen first disappeared. But when she came back from her weekend vacation, 
she noticed that Kristen was not there, but all of her things were there. And so she decided to start asking around. Nobody had seen her since Friday. So as you would imagine, she became very concerned. So she decided to contact campus police. But by that time, Kristen had been missing for three days already. Now, when campus police contacted Kristen's parents, they originally asked if there was a possibility that she had come home for the weekend, but they said that she had never come home and she actually was supposed to be contacting them back and never did. But oddly enough, being that it was Memorial Day weekend, the campus police were very, very slow to contacting the authorities, being that they assumed that she was a teenager, she was young, and she more likely went on this random vacation of her own, that maybe she went on a road trip, because that's what college students do. Eventually, word got around and the missing posters started to pay off. Leads started coming in from everywhere of sightings of Kristen. But the problem was, Kristen had a very, very familiar look. She was a tall, beautiful blonde woman which was not abnormal where she was, which led to a lot of dead ends due to mistaken identity. Now, initially the police did not see any foul play and it seemed like there was a possibility that maybe that she was too intoxicated and possibly just wandered off. But then eventually eyewitnesses started stating that they remembered seeing sometime after Paul Flores had certain injuries on himself and he gave excuses for why he was injured. But that story changed more than once, which is something that made the police take a look at the transcripts one more time pertaining to Paul Flores. Paul Flores had a black eye and scratches on him during the interrogation when he was speaking with the authorities and the police asked him why he never mentioned what all of these injuries were for or something that happened prior he said that he didn't feel like it was relevant, but it is relevant when there's a woman that has gone missing that he was last seen with. The authorities decided to bring dogs to the campus to try to sniff and see if they could catch Kristen Smart's scent anywhere. They took the dogs to the dormitories and oddly enough, the dogs led them straight to Paul Flores's dormitory. But even though the dogs led them to that room, they were still led to a brick wall. When investigating the room and doing the search, they discovered that the room had actually been cleaned and sanitized due to the fact that the school had reached the end of the semester, so a lot of the students were going home. So they were able to see that Kristen was in the room or was with somebody that was in the room. But that wasn't enough to be able to charge Paul Flores. So they decided to take it a step further. There was a civil suit that was placed against Paul Flores and during the conversation that he had with authorities, from the guidance of his attorney, he answered no questions. He pled the fifth, which absolutely frustrated not just investigators, but the family of Kristen Smart as well. But the authorities didn't give up. They decided to do a search at Paul Flores' home where his parents lived. Of course, they did a search of his room, and discovered several different news articles of Kristen Smart's disappearance. When asking him why he had all of these things, he said it was due to the fact that he was directly or possibly connected to this case and he wanted to keep an eye on what was going on with it. Now, even though that sent up a red flag for the authorities, they still didn't have anything that they could charge him with. So some time went by and eventually they decided to do an investigation and search on one of the properties that the Flores family owned that was actually being rented by somebody. When doing the investigation, the person that was renting the house made a discovery of their own. They found a turquoise earring in the driveway that ultimately belonged to Kristen Smart. The authorities were elated and they thought that they finally had some sort of rock solid evidence to try to figure out what happened to this young woman. They felt like they were walking in the right direction, but quickly things changed. When the earring that they had discovered and placed into evidence went missing, it said that it was placed into a drawer 
and disappeared, never to be seen again. And they were back in square one. So time went on, years went by, Paul Flores went on with his life and Kristen Smart's family tried their best to cope with life without their loving daughter. But what was interesting was during the years that went by, Paul Flores had more than one report against him of violence towards women. Shocking, right? Now, throughout the 25 years that Kristen Smart has been missing, there was a time where there was a hillside near the school that Kristen Smart attended that was searched. But unfortunately, authorities have not said to the public what was found, but it did give them some sort of hope to finally reaching some sort of answer to what happened to Kristen Smart. Fast forward, starting in January 2020, there have been new search warrants that have been placed around the Flores' property. There have been 37 items placed into evidence for DNA testing, 91 interviews, and there have been 18 searches at nine locations. Now it is a bit early for the investigators to say whether or not they've been able to crack this case, but We've reached a time where there are way more resources when it comes down to investigating cases like this and they're hoping that with new technology they'll be able to come closer to finally finding out what happened to Kristen Smart and giving Kristen Smart's family peace of mind and closure. So the reason why this story is so important to me is because this is not the first time something like this has happened. This is a very, very, very common case where people go missing that are in college and they're on campus. We know what it means to go to college. We know that you're supposed to be having fun along with studying and you're going to be adventurous and you're going to do some things that you may not have necessarily done while you were still under the roof of your parents, roof, roof, roof of your parents. It's still very important to acknowledge how dangerous it still can be, especially when you're in college because there's a lot of drinking, there's a lot of experimenting, there's a lot of different things going on where young people don't always think about the dangers of what they're doing. And rightfully so, it's understandable. You know, um, I will say the one thing that bothered me the most is the three individuals that um, were supposed to have taken Kristen Smart back to her dorm. One of them was a female. And see, the thing about it is there is a bit of a female safety code between women, whether we really know each other or not, about staying with each other, looking out for each other. And I think that was probably my biggest issue. I'm not wanting to judge the young woman, but I would not feel that comfortable, especially if this was a young woman that I knew. I would not feel so comfortable just leaving her with this man to guide her back to her room. Regardless of whether I knew him or not, still there's a girl code that we have to look out for one another and that we're all at risk, especially when it's a situation when people are drinking. Don't trust everybody. But as usual, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you think. Do you think that Paul Flores could have possibly taken the life of Kristen Smart? Or do you think that there's a possibility that he knows way more than he's willing to tell people about what happened to her? Make sure you leave your answers and your thoughts down in the comments. As always, I am Kel McQueen. And until next time, stay weird. Normal's overrated.